Each year we fund and supervise the design and construction of a number of concrete boat launching ramps throughout California. And each year we continue to see the same types of problems develop during construction that result in less than satisfactory surface finishes on some of these ramps. This causes problems for the contractors, for the ramp owners, for boating and waterways, and most important of all, problems for the boaters who use the ramps. An improperly or poorly finished ramp diminishes the wheel traction of the vehicle towing a boat and trailer and affects the ramp's efficiency, safety, and durability. So I'd like to convey to you some information about concrete launching ramps in general and some tips about how to effectively impart a V-groove finish to wet concrete. Concrete launching ramps can be built in the dry using cast in place concrete or can be built underwater using precast concrete panels. For the purposes of this video, we will focus our attention on cast in place concrete construction. However, many of the techniques and procedures discussed will be applicable and useful to you on precast ramps. Cast in place concrete launching ramps are typically inclined slabs reinforced to meet temperature and structural requirements. Each ramp site must be assessed and the ramp designed to meet particular physical requirements. However, all ramps should be constructed at grades between 12 and and 15 percent using a minimum thickness of 6 inches, 3 quarter inch maximum size crushed aggregate, type 2 cement, 3000 psi minimum strength concrete, 5% air entrainment, a slump of 3 to 4 inches, V-groove the finish at 60 degrees from the ramp center line, and use number 4 rebar at 12 inches each way for slab reinforcement. Once the basic design is determined, actual construction should proceed with due consideration to the following. The time of year, the temperature, winds, the altitude, climatical conditions, the size of the contractor's crew, and the haul distance from the batch plant to the project site. Build the ramp one lane at a time with a maximum width per lane of 15 feet. It's not prudent to attempt to place wet concrete and properly finish it in widths greater than 15 feet. The diagonal distances become too great and finish work becomes awkward and difficult. Starting at one corner of the lower end of the ramp, place the wet concrete in the forms and screed uphill. This can be done manually using a good straight 2 by 6 as a screed. However, if you have a lot of linear feet of ramp to build, a vibrator power screed does an excellent job. It not only screeds the wet surface, but vibrates the concrete, causing the aggregate to slightly settle into the mortar, making the finish work better and easier. It may be necessary to wood float the surface if the screed doesn't produce a satisfactory surface. Before we talk about the ramp finish, let me suggest some things that I have learned and observed over the years that are fundamental to good ramp construction. Use a concrete crew of not less than five workers. Place no more than eight to ten cubic yards of concrete per hour. Screed and finish each load of concrete before allowing the next truck to discharge its load. Start from the bottom and work uphill. Start early in the day. Build one 15-foot lane at a time and have all necessary tools, supplies, equipment, and materials on site before beginning placement of the concrete. Over the years, the preferred finish for concrete launching ramps has proved to be a V-groove design in which the grooves are cut into the wet concrete at a 60-degree angle to the center line of the ramp. It provides excellent traction for vehicles, wears well over a long period, has an attractive appearance, and is self-cleaning to some extent as waves tend to wash sand, silt, and debris down the grooves and off the side of the ramp. The V-grooves are imparted to the wet concrete by a finishing tool specially fabricated for the purpose. Steel, aluminum, 
and wood tools have been used successfully. However, it appears that there are good reasons to use aluminum in consideration of the tool's weight, size, and the ease and speed with which a finisher can use it. Experience has shown that a tool of approximately 22 to 25 pounds is ideal with a maximum length of 24 to 30 inches. Using one by one by one eighth inch steel angle, the maximum width tool will be about eight to 10 inches wide. An aluminum tool made of the same size stock can be up to 24 inches wide and still weigh about 25 pounds. This means the aluminum tool will finish a wider surface and be about two and a half times more productive than a steel tool of the same weight. An aluminum tool of the dimensions described can easily be used to finish approximately 30 to 35 linear feet of 15 foot wide ramp per hour or an area of about 450 to 525 square feet. The unit weight of the tool in pounds per square foot or per square inch doesn't seem to be critical. If the tool is too light, it won't do the job. Too heavy and your workers can't handle it effectively. In summary, I believe the most critical factor in this whole process of achieving good v-grooves is the slump of the concrete. It is critical to achieve a three to four inch slump at the time of placement. So have a slump cone at the site and use it. The second most critical factor is the attitude of the contractor and his crew. We see contractors each year bid on ramp jobs who have years of experience placing and finishing curb and gutter, foundations, slabs, and various other types of so-called flat work. A lot of them routinely place and finish dozens of cubic yards of concrete in an eight-hour workday. Although they have never done a V-groove boat ramp built on a slope, the yardage is usually relatively small, and they bring an almost cocky confidence to the ramp job that gets them into trouble. They often won't listen to the advice from others and have an old-fashioned case of hard of listening. They typically try to work with too small a crew, don't have everything ready to go when the concrete arrives on the job site, they lay down too much wet concrete too fast and get too far ahead of their finishers. They often give little or no attention to weather, climatic conditions, or specific aspects of the construction site. I wish you well with your project and hope this video has been helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments on the subject of launching ramp finishes, please give us a call 